Hello again, Corey Werkheiser, College of Charleston, School of Business Student Success Center. I know that's a lot of information at once. Here's what I want you to remember today. We're going to talk about cover letters, and it's important that the cover letter goes along with the resume. That's why I call it Resume Plus. Within the resume, you're using key words and phrases, things that are critical that match that job description, but you can't do much because the resume is kind of limited. The cover letter is your opportunity to really get that information out there to the employer. It's the resume plus. It enhances what you say. The resume is the business card. The cover letter is what you're trying to say in prose form. What makes sense to the employer in a paragraph. These are the things you need to keep in mind. Why are you the best candidate? There may be dozens of people, more than that even, that apply for this job. You need to stand out. The cover letter can help you do that. Demonstrate your knowledge of the company so they can see that you have some idea what they do. Make sure that you match your skill with the job description, keywords and phrases. Emphasize your accomplishments and achievements. And make sure it's clear because this is a writing sample. This is a communication sample. This demonstrates computer skills and aptitude. If your resume says you have great communication skills, outstanding written and verbal skills, great computer skills, and the cover letter looks like junk, it's not going to be acceptable. So make sure you're emphasizing those skills through your cover letter. Things you should keep in mind. Did you use those keywords? I know you got to get tired of hearing me say that, but it's absolutely hypercritical that you use those keywords and phrases from the job description. Have I explained why I'm interested in this position or this organization? Can they see that you have the knowledge of this particular job and what you're trying to do in this position? Have you addressed your connection to those skills and knowledges that they require? If not, you are not doing everything you should do. Research, very important. I tell people all the time, there's no excuse today. You don't have to go to the library and go to the card catalog and figure out the Dewey Decimal System. You don't have to do that. Google. I did not get paid for that advertising, by the way, like you had to know about Google. Like, hey, I've never heard of that before. Google can be your friend on this. You can find the company's website, go to the About Us tab, and find out what they do. They may not ask for the third quarter profits from fiscal year 2012, but they may want to know, can you answer basic questions about the company? You should. Things you should think about always are, does the cover letter address the questions that were asked? Have you explained your prior experience? How do you explain how your accomplishments and experiences match what you're trying to do? Do they know that they can benefit from hiring you? If you're not saying those things in the cover letter, you're not saying everything you should. Cover letter format, standard business letter, plain and simple. Everyone really kind of gets freaked out about cover letters, but really it's just a business letter. And can you keep to that format, which I'll show you here shortly. One page is absolutely preferred. I have sent cover letters for jobs that have gone on to a second page. I don't recommend it, but sometimes it'll happen. But generally speaking, a one-page cover letter is desirable. Hiring managers spend very limited time looking at per, uh, particular resumes and cover letters, so you don't want them to have to fumble around and change papers. They may not do that. They may just move on. Make sure you've got one-inch standard margins, 10 to 12 point font, a typeface that makes sense, Calibri or Arial. Again, I know they're not very exciting, but they are easy to read. That's what you're going for. Email your own email first. Send that PDF out there so you can see what it looks like. That way, when you upload it, you'll know what they're seeing as well. Sometimes when you upload a resume or cover letter, you can actually go back and see what that looks like to the employer. It'll have a view or something along those lines. I highly recommend you do that. Follow their preferences. If their requirements say to do step one, three, four, whatever, skip two, one, two, three, four, whatever, make sure you do that. If you skip two, like I did, you're not going to get anywhere in the process. So make sure you follow all those steps. Did you follow all the directions and requirements? If you didn't, you did something wrong, you failed. And you may not ever find out why you never got a phone call. All of a sudden, two months will go by and you're like, you know what? I never heard from this employer. That's because you did something wrong. Don't fall into that trap. When possible, demonstrate impact. Did you save money or did you find a way to increase sales and increase revenue in your previous or current job? Those are things you need to be saying on the resume. Did you solve problems, salvage a horrible situation that could have resulted in loss of a customer base or revenue for a company? Did you fix that? 
Or did you go above and beyond to help a customer? Those are things you should be able to quantify and get on the resume. Capitalize on opportunities, build something new, increase sales, streamline processes. You want to show the employer that you can do things that are going to help that company. It's more about what you can do for the company and less about what you're going to get out of that job. That's not important. Everyone walks in there thinking, I'm going to negotiate my paycheck. Don't worry about that. Right now, you got to worry about getting that interview. That's the important part. All cover letters addressed to someone specific. You never know where that's going to go in the mailroom. You never know who's going to see it. So make sure you address it to a specific person as much as possible. Even if it's the coordinator of human resources, even if it's the CEO of the company, address it to someone. Better to get a specific person related to this job, the hiring manager, the human resource director, someone that's going to be directly involved in this process. Information should enhance the resume, not restate it. If you're just simply copying parts of your resume and pasting them onto the cover letter, even the bullet points, you're doing it wrong. Make sure you're using those keywords, 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 get it matched to the job description. One page, as much as possible. Like I said, there's going to be situations where that may not be possible or necessary, but most of the time it's desirable. Spelling and grammar, if it's not 100% correct, you are in danger of not going anywhere in the process. Absolutely, make sure that your resume and cover letter are 100% accurate in every sense. Minor mistakes may not seem like a big deal to you. It can be a very big deal to an employer. I may get down to two candidates. I'm looking at two resumes and cover letters. This one has an error or two. This one does not. Which one would you choose? I think you probably know the answer to that question. Spelling and grammar, 100% accurate. Make sure the contact information is correct. I have called people to offer interviews and gotten a, this number is no longer in service or has been disconnected because they transpose numbers in their phone number. How can I know that? Make sure you are very careful about those things. Everything that you send should be individualized. Don't send out form letters. Make it specific. It's individual correspondence. It is absolutely critical that you don't make it look like you threw it together in five seconds just to get it in there and get on the list. That is not going to be a successful job search with your resume and cover letter. Here's a good sample. Notice it's just a plain old business letter. I know it doesn't look good, but bear with me. You can see, even if it's blurry, your contact information, the date, their contact information, dear, whomever. The first paragraph explains why you're interested in that job and where it is, what the title is, what the company is. The second paragraph, why you're interested in that company, what experience do you have, what skills and education do you have that match it. And the third paragraph is thanking them for their time, very important, and making sure you restate your contact information. Get that email address on there. And by the way, make sure your email address is professional. If it sounds ridiculous, if it was hilarious when you were 17, not so much now that you're trying to be a professional, you should change it. Get a serious email address. If you're a student, your EDU address is just fine. But over time, you'll probably stop using that. So a personal Gmail account, Hotmail, Yahoo, whatever you prefer, is a good way to go once you start that job search after graduation. While you're in school and starting that, grad, that job search, then your student email is just fine. But over time, as you stop to use that, it can be a problem for you. Sincerely, your name or regards, or very respectfully, something that is formal and professional. The cover letter is resume plus. If you mess up the cover letter with a great resume, or if you have a great cover letter with a messed up resume, you are not doing everything you should. Make sure you keep those things in mind. Corey Workheiser Student Success Center at the College of Charleston School of Business. Anytime we can be of assistance, please let me know. If you're not at the College of Charleston, feel free to comment, email me, Glad to help if I can.